I'm so bearish on the system that I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I'm, I'm hugely bullish on Bitcoin. I came to the, the party much later than, than most of you. Um, and I also come from that institutional investing world like Mark, uh, Mark, Mark does. However, uh, you know, and that's part of the issue is that m- the people who have benefited the most from this system are not apt to look at Bitcoin. Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, James Lavish discuss about Bitcoin. According to James Lavish, James Lavish think my bullishness on Bitcoin stems from my extreme bearishness on the system. Unlike most of you, James Lavish joined the party much later, but Lavish really positive on Bitcoin like Mark. James Lavish came from the realm of institutional investing as well. But you know, and that's one of the problems. As those who have profited, the majority of users of this system are unlikely to view Bitcoin as helpful since they don't require anything else. Neither Warren Buffett nor anyone else needs or wants anything more. Jamie Dimon and Charlie Munger do not like each other, and they do not want this because it is incredibly. But now, why isn't someone like Elizabeth Warren interested in it if she can't use it to control you? That puts her outside of her sphere of influence and causes her problems, which returns to your first argument about how this gains as we will observe over the next three to six months. We have approved various Bitcoin spot ETFs, allowing numerous institutional small-scale family offices, investors, and those who have simply not been successful in persuading their investing committee that possessing Bitcoin is anything that is not a matter of reputation and lots of things James Lavish discuss. So please watch the video to end and like, share this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. Thanks. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, so, well, first of all, I do believe I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I believe I'm so bearish on the system that I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I'm, I'm hugely bullish on Bitcoin. I came to the, the party much later than, than most of you. Um, and I also come from that institutional investing world like Mark, uh, Mark, Mark does. However, uh, you know, and that's part of the issue is that m- the people who have benefited the most from this system are not apt to look at Bitcoin as something that helps them because they, they don't need something else. Warren Buffett doesn't need or want anything else. Neither does Charlie Munger. Neither, neither does Jamie Dimon. Like they do not want this. Why? Because it is tremendously disruptive. Now, why doesn't somebody like Elizabeth Warren want it? Because she cannot control you with it. It is out of her, out of her purview of control. And that's a problem for her. So that goes back to your point of, okay, as this gains traction and as we see in the next three to six months, we have multiple Bitcoin spot ETFs approved which enables many institutional investors, small offices, small family offices, and those who just have not been able to convince their investment committee that holding Bitcoin is something that is, that is not a reputational or, or a career risk. They just, they have not been able to get to it because they're, because of the internal controls on, on buying, on settling, on, on custodying, on pricing, on marking market on Bitcoin. They just have not been able to get there. And so when we do have those ETFs, it's not only going to, uh, enable certain family offices and institutions to be able to buy Bitcoin immediately. It's just like buying a stock. They can settle it with their prime broker. It's no big deal. Uh, they have a custodian already, but that's one step. The second step is it's going to force a, a, an entire, an entire sector of, of investors that have been ignoring it. It's going to force them to look into it and understand it. And so having that understanding is really the next, next big step, which makes me tremendously bullish because there's no arguing that the, the fundamentals of, of Bitcoin, it, 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 it trumps even the, the, that digital gold narrative, which will be the first narrative. That's going to be the first narrative is I, I agree with uh, Michael Saylor on this, that the, the first 
um, use for you know use case for most investors is going to be digital gold. Then we move into the uh oh, we need to control this phase, right? So what's what are the options? Can they ban it? It can't be banned. I mean, you see, you've seen what happened in China. They they I don't know if they pretended to ban it. It's difficult to understand what what their policies are with uh, with that regime, but. China is still one of the biggest Bitcoin miners on the planet, if not the biggest. Right? James Lavish believe we are approaching the point where people are a little concerned. But once ETFs are extensively used and owned, they cannot be banned destined to be. That would be lavish. Simply don't see them opposing black rock and loyalty. You are aware of State Street, Texas educators, CPRs. And that would be such a significant step that James Lavish just can't seem to get they might be able to tax it heavily there or whatever. But Lavish don't think these when ETFs is approved. It's equivalent to receiving a seal of approval. Let's back to the James Lavish interview. Incredible. And then th there you go. And so, you know, and so I think we get into the spot here where people are a little bit worried about. But once we get the ETFs and it's widely owned, they, they can't ban it. That's going to be that would be I, I just can't see them working against BlackRock and Fidelity and, you know, State Street and, and Texas teachers and, and CalPERS. And like, that would be, that would be such a monumental move. I, I, I can't, I can't get there. They could tax it significantly in a way or something, but I don't, it, these ETFs, once they get approved, that that's like a stamp of approval that I believe will, will, will put this into the mainstream and that's it. The cat's out of the bag. And then what, what, you know, the number go up technology is interesting, of course, because you're seeing this, this influx of capital into the space that's tremendous. And it's going to be, and that's going to be the, the digital gold narrative. But as that comes in, you're going to see this expansion on top of that, on the, on the, on the next layers, on transaction layers, on, you know, uh, on, on the second and third layer of, of Bitcoin that, enables um, just a whole new array of technology and companies that are going to capitalize on that. And that's the, that's something that's super interesting. This goes beyond the miners. This goes into software solutions and hardware solutions and, you know, uh, and Bitcoin enabling the Bitcoin layer enabling things that we just, that we just can't do right now in a way that is more secure and, and, uh, doesn't, doesn't need the trust because it's trustless that the uh that the other cryptocurrencies need because they're central you know they're they're centralized where the decentralized nature of of bitcoin enables uh, a growth in an industry that we would not have seen we're going to have we had the internet we're going to have ai and we're going to have the bitcoin industry and those are those are you know those are the two big developments i think that are coming down the pipe and it's going it's going to be interesting it's going to be exciting and, and that is exactly like you and i were talking about before the show that's exactly why we started the, the bitcoin opportunity fund because we see tremendous opportunity we're already seeing we're talking to people and um and we're investing in companies that we're super super excited about and so, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's an exciting industry. I think it's just going to develop exponentially from here. According to James Lavish, Bitcoin facilitating the layer, enabling Bitcoin things that at this time we simply aren't able to accomplish in a manner that is safer and doesn't require the trust as opposed to the other cryptocurrencies, which lack trust because they're central, they're necessary. You are aware that despite Bitcoin's decentralized nature, they are centralized allows for the expansion of an industry that we never would have imagined we have had the internet and in the future we'll have artificial intelligence ai the bitcoin market and you these two significant developments james lavish said in my opinion are on the horizon they should be thrilling and interesting to watch if you learn something from this video then please like this video and subscribe our channel everyday finance and we will meet in next video thanks